Okay, so let's carry on. We're expanding out more and more functions and with our Taylor series, or our McLaurin series, I should say, since we're expanding about the point x is equal to zero. And in the last video, we worked with f of x is equal to sine x. In this video, we're going to deal with f of x is equal to cosine of x. Now, this will, see, this will seem very similar to the last video because we're going to do essentially the same protocol. We're going to take multiple derivatives, plug it in here, evaluate them at zero, x is equal to zero, see what's remaining, try and find a pattern, and write it in nice compact series notation. And then take a look at it graphically. So let's get started. Let's first start off, like before, by taking derivatives. And this should hopefully seem familiar. Uh, if our original function is cosine of x, the first derivative, f prime, that's just negative sine of x. The second derivative, f double prime, that's derivative of negative sine, that's negative cosine of x. And then uh, the third derivative is just derivative negative cosine is just sine of x. And this should seem very similar because we just did this in the last video and we found that it'll repeat these four derivatives because the derivative of the sine of x is cosine, then negative sine, then negative cosine, etc. It's the same pattern as before. We're just starting off at a different point. Last time we started off with our original function is sine of x and the first derivative, derivative was cosine. Here we're starting off with cosine, and the first derivative is negative sine, and so on. So let's see how that affects our Taylor series approximation, or Taylor series expansion. So we can say that f tilde of x, that's just going to be equal to our original function at x is equal to 0, so cosine of 0, plus x over 1 factorial times the first derivative, evaluate at 0, negative sine of 0. And we've seen this before, so I'll just try and write them out really quickly. Plus our next term, x squared over 2 factorial times the second derivative, negative cosine of 0. Plus x cubed over 3 factorial times the third derivative, sine 0 plus x to the fourth over four factorial times the fourth derivative, which is just cosine again, then the fifth derivative over five factorial, sorry, x to the fifth over five factorial times the fifth derivative, which is negative sine of zero, and let's just do one more for luck, x to the sixth over six factorial times z. 6th derivative, which will be negative cosine evaluated at 0. And then it keeps going on and on. But let's just work with here. So we know what to do now. We can just evaluate what these are. And we know that cosine of 0 is just 1, and sine of 0 is 0. So we can plug in what these values are. This is just going to be 1. This sine of 0 is going to be 0. This is going to be uh, negative 1 times cosine 0. Then that's negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. And then it repeat 0, 1, 0, negative 1, etc., etc. So like before, let's see what we're left with. We've got that our approximation equal to, okay, we're left with 1, then plus 0, and then we uh, the next term is x squared over 2 factorial, and that's multiplied by negative 1, so we're subtracting that, and then uh, we've got x to the 4th over 4 factorial, that's multiplied by positive 1, then x to the 6th over 6 factorial, and we're multiplying that by negative 1, and then it keeps going on and on. And just to really emphasize this point, we can rewrite 1 as just x to the 0 over 0 factorial. Because we know x to the 0 or anything to the 0 power is just 1, and 0 factorial is defined to be 1. 
So we can just swap that in there if we like. And we can see that there's a nice pattern. Here we have all the even terms. In the sine, uh, in the case with sine, we had all the odd terms. And notice what happened. Because we started off at a different point and took derivatives from a different point, all the cosine terms got paired off with the even uh, powers of x this time x to the 0, x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, and they all survive because x evaluated at 0 is just either 1 or negative 1. And unlike, uh, unlike before, all the odd terms got paired with all the sine terms, which all became 0. So it was kind of like the nice complement to what happened with the sine case. In the sine case, we're left with all the odd powers. Here, we're left with all the even powers. So we could probably guess that the next few terms are going to be x to the 8th over 8 factorial and x to the 10th over 10 factorial. And also notice, like before, the sign flips each and every time. We start off with positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, then positive, then this will hopefully be negative, and then positive, and so on. So we can hopefully try and rewrite this in our compact series notation. So we can rewrite this as the sum of our index n going from 0 all the way up to, let's just say, capital N. And now, like before, we need to write it as x to the something over something factorial. And we want all the even terms. And like before, we had stressed that our index n it's going to be equal to 0, then it's going to be equal to 1, then it's going to be equal to 2, then 3, all the way up to capital N. And these are both even and odd, and we want just the even terms. So what we can do is we can multiply it by 2. So we can say that 2n, that's going to be 2 times 0, which is 0, 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, all the way up to 2n. And notice, these are all even, and these are all the terms we want. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. So in this case, we can describe it in terms of our index n by saying x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And like before, in order to describe the sign flipping, the plus or minus sign each time, we're going to do negative 1 to the n power. So when n is even, like n is 0, or n is 2, or n is 4, it's going to become uh, negative 1 to an even power, which is just 1. And for the odd n index terms, like 1, 3, uh, 5, etc., we're going to have negative 1 to an odd power, which will remain at negative 1. So here we have our nice compact seri uh, series notation. And, we, and like before, we can say that this series will approximate the, cos the entire cosine function better and better and better when we add more and more and more terms, to the point where we can say that we can approximate the entire cosine function if we have an infinite sum. n is equal to 0 of negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And that's just this expression here going all the way up to the infinity, so we get like x to the infinity over infinity factorial. And if you'd like, we can actually visualize it again with our handy dandy graphing program. Here we have a nice cosine wave. And let's just do what we did last time. Let's just see what our tail and series approximation is. And we can add it term by term. So the first term of our Taylor series approximation that's just x to the 0 over 0 factorial, or just 1. So y is equal to 1 would be our 0th order approximation, which is a very, very poor approximation, considering it just touches it at one point. Then we can do the next term, which is minus x squared over 2 factorial, which kind of mimics that curve, so it's getting pretty good. Then we can 
add the next term, x to the fourth over four factorial, which approximates more of the curve, then minus x to the sixth over six factorial, Oops, there we go, which approximates even more. And if you like, I even wrote out this series notation so we can see what happens when we add more and more and more terms. So here's our original cosine function. If we have a Taylor series approximation with five terms, it looks something like this. If we have approximation with 10 terms, it looks kind of like that. If we have 20 terms, we get even, even more of this uh, cosine function. If we have 50 terms, oops, there we go. We extend more and more out and we approximate even more of the cosine function. So like before, we can say that if we have an infinite amount of terms, then we'll mimic this cosine function all the way out to infinity, which is another way of saying that the cosine of x is equal to the infinite sum and is equal to zero to infinity of this polynomial. So there we have it. We found our nice Taylor series expansion for our cosine of x, and using all the expansions we've done so far, we can find some pretty interesting approximations and some really interesting results, which we're going to hopefully look at in the next video.